Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm going to do the five quotes book tag, or the five book quotes tag. Um, I was tagged to do this by Montezuma Mama and I've been trying to do this for ages but I'm having technical problems with various cameras so I'm trying another one. So, uh, I will leave a link to Montezuma Mama's uh, channel below if you want to check out her videos, which would be great. So the first quote I'm going to give you is from An Evening In with Audrey Hepburn by Lucy Holiday. Libby is basically at this point in the book complaining literally about everything that's gone wrong in her life or everything that does go wrong in her life and Audrey turns and says to her, oh darling, nothing ever goes the way that it's supposed to go. And we could take that as it's true. I mean, we all make plans and then it goes wrong and we moan, oh why can't the, you know. And sometimes there's silly little dreams about winning the lottery or doing something like that. And sometimes it's just the sort of thing that Libby's dreaming about and it's so silly. So I really like that quote. Uh, the second quote is from A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which is a Sherlock Holmes book. I don't actually have that. I do have a volume of Sherlock Holmes, but it's not got that particular story in it. And it's, a, it's I think it's most of one of the most, one of the two most famous quotes. And basically it is, you see, but you do not observe. Now I like this quote because I think it's very true, because how many times do you see something in the street but you don't actually observe it? So you may see something and say, oh she had a nice coat on and she was like long and black and uh, pretty buttons were what they were like. I, I can't remember but they were very nice. You saw them but you didn't observe the details. So that's a good one. Now the third one, if I just turn around, is from The Great Gatsby, which is one of my favourite books. This is my old and very battered copy of F. Scott Fitzgerald's novels, all of them in one volume. There were actually quite a few that I could pick from this one, but I've chosen the first few lines of the actual novel. And basically it says, In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticising anyone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. So, yeah, basically he's saying, remember that there are people worse off than yourself because um, you have had it quite easy. And I think it's still pertinent today. We live in a world where there's so many millions of people starving and don't have clean water and we take it for granted every single day. We've got roofs over our heads, we've got electricity, we've got water, we've got food, we've got books, we've got the internet, we've got so much. And yet we still know that it's not enough. And oops, that just fell on the floor. Never mind. The next one is from Terry Goodkin's Wizard's First Rule, which is one of my favourite books. It takes a bit of explaining the context on this one. I would, I would totally recommend you read this book if you haven't read it already. I love this book. It's one of my favourite fantasy books. And in it, you've got the two characters of Richard and Caelan. Richard comes from a land where there's no magic at all. Caelan comes from a land where most of the creatures are magical, including herself. She is what's called a confessor. She's a woman, but she is a confessor. And confessors were created to get the truth from people by simply touching them. And when a confessor touches somebody, they release their power into them, and that makes them tell the truth. Not technically. What it does is it, it makes them completely... Um, dedicated to the one who touched them to the point that they would do anything um, kill themselves kill somebody else um, tell the truth which is the point now at this point in the story Kaylin has learned that or has been told that Richard has been killed by Dark and Roll who's the bad guy in the piece and that really obviously pisses her off it upsets her and she goes into something called the condar which is the blood rage it can only be invoked on behalf of one person ever and only the strongest of confessors can do it Kaylin is the mother confessor so she's very very strong so she's gone into the condar she's very very angry she's literally just told somebody to die after touching them and they've just dropped dead that's how powerful she is when she's in the rage and she's going after dark and raw because she is not one happy bunny at this point. So she's getting herself ready in her pretty white dress and she's brushed her hair and she's put makeup on. Now makeup is not to make you look nice, it's actually a warning and it's, I think, when I read about it, it makes me sound like Ziggy, it makes it sound like David Bowie, you know, just stripes down his face because that's what she does. Anyway, in the books, the confessors all wear the same style of dresses. Now, um, confessors generally wear black dresses except for the mother confessor who wears white. And Zed is the first wizard, and he is with her at this point, and basically the quote goes, She strode purposefully along, eyes ahead, disinterested in what was about her. Her confessor's dress flowed and flapped behind her like a flame in the wind. Zed had always thought the confessors looked beautiful in their dresses, especially the white of the mother confessor. 
but he saw it now from what it really was, battle armour. So basically what he's saying is her confessor's dress is a warning, especially when she's in the Condar. She's not weak, she is strong and she is a warrior. She is a soldier, she is the last arbitrator of truth. She will do whatever she can for justice. There's no stopping her. Get out the way. She will kill you if you get in her way. And that's how he sees it now, that this is, this is the warning. The dress is the warning. And the last quote is actually, there's two versions of this quote, so I hope I'm in the frame because I'm using a little compact. And that comes from Terry Pratchett's Hogfather, as you know, I'm a huge Terry Pratchett fan. Hogfather, there's two quotes from this one, they're pretty much identical, very similar, they mean the same thing. One is from the book, one is from the Sky television adaptation, so I'm going to give you them both because I like them both. Terry Pratchett's Hogfather, this is uh, the Discworld's equivalent to Father Christmas. He has gone missing, basically. People don't believe him in, in him anymore. So Death has taken his place. Death is doing the Hogfather's job. He is basically um, sorting out who's been naughty and nice, giving the presents out to the kids, making appearances, leaving city footprints and so on. And Death's granddaughter is always help, also helping out by trying to find the real Hogfather. Now, the Hogfather has now been, because this is right at the end of the book again, has been returned to his rightful place in the, in the Castle of Bones, and he is back. Death decides to take Susan, his granddaughter, a Christmas card, so he takes her a card and she looks at it and she's a bit puzzled because it's just a bit of a mess, because Death doesn't understand human nature, he doesn't understand what humans are about, although he tries to be like them. So basically he's given her a Christmas card and he's tried to put real snow on it and a real robin on it and he just doesn't understand why the robin flew off and the snow melted. He thought it was very, very, you know, unorganised of them all. And basically she's just saying, he's, he's, try he's trying to get into Hogwarts spirit and she's like, um, why did you do all this? I think it's something to do with harvest, she said at last. Yes, that's right. And because humans are so interesting that they have even invented a dullness. Quite astonishing. And that's from the book. Now, the Sky quote is slightly different, so if you've ever seen the Sky adaptation of Hogfather, it's really good. Do check it out. It's brilliant. See if you can spot Terry Pratchett as well, because Terry is in it. Um, and the adaptation version says, Humans are so interesting. In a universe filled with wonders, <laughs> I couldn't remember, in a universe filled with wonders, they have invented boredom. And I, I completely agree, because we often say, oh, this is so dull, or I'm so bored. And why are we so bored? Why? Are we, how can we ever have time to be bored? We live on a marvellous planet. There is so much to look for. There's so many places to visit. There's so much history to learn about. There's so many pubs to go to if you're into drinking. There's so many clubs to go to if you're into music. There's so many bands to listen to. So much music. So many books to read. How can we ever be bored? How can it ever be dull? It's true. We should never be bored and we should never be dull. So that is my five quotes for the five quotes um, tag. I'm going to tag Peter, like book, Peter Likes Books because I, I love his videos and I'd love to know what his favourite quotes are. And also Sherry Walker because I think she's fabulous as well. If I haven't tagged you and you want to do it, consider yourself tagged. I would love everybody to do it. I'd love to know what quotes that people like. I'm one of these people, I don't really write down quotes. It's something that I'm going to start doing and I have even bought a really nice notebook for it. So you can ask me in a month, have I written any quotes in it? It's, it's currently still empty. It's brand new. Nice, pretty one. So I'm going to try that. So assuming this video goes up, I'll be back soon because I will be taking part in Booktubeathon. I'll be back with my TBR for the Booktubeathon pretty soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.